Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric, and today I wanted to show you some simple troubleshooting steps when troubleshooting a pump panel or any kind of motor control panel. We're gonna go right through testing the 480 volt, testing our control power. I've introduced a problem into this pump panel. We're gonna go through and figure out what that problem is and why the motor won't start. So let's get right into it. Troubleshooting a motor control panel. So first off, before I turn the power onto this panel, we need to think about what kind of PPE we're going to need. Now we know we're going to use a voltmeter to test voltages. We're going to use a voltmeter and we're going to be testing 480 volts along with 110 volts. So the first thing that should come to our mind is what kind of protective gear, personal protective equipment, do we need to have on? So for this, we're going to need at least level 2 PPE according to the NFPA 70E and that involves having our our category 2 clothing on, a, a face shield, a, a baklalava on, rubber gloves and leather leather liners. So let's get right to that. So here I have level 2 PPE shirt and before I get right into it I have to get this on and I'm gonna need a baklalava. I know it sounds like a dessert, but it's not. We're gonna need our, our head sock on is what it is, all right? Because we don't have level two without it. Okay, and we're also gonna need our face shield, our category gloves for, a, this is cat rated at a thousand volts. Actually, this is rated at, at 500 volts gloves, so we're gonna put that on. All right, so now we gotta do some voltage testing. So we're gonna get our voltmeter out. We're gonna put our face shield down. We're gonna turn power on to this disconnect. And we're gonna go right through, figuring out what's going on with our power. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test to, on the line side of the breaker to see if I have 480 volts, three phase power. So first of all, I'm going to test from A, phase A to phase B, and I do have 480 volts. Then I'm going to test from phase A to phase C, and I do have 480 volts. And then I'm gonna test from phase B to phase C, and I do have 480 volts. So I have 480 on each phase, and I'm going to test from phase A to ground, 277, phase A to ground, our phase B to ground, 277, phase C to ground, 277. So I have my 480 volts. Next, I want to test the load side of the breaker to make sure power is getting to the starter. And I'll actually test at the top of the starter for the load side of the breaker. So here I'm going to test the load side of the breaker. I'm going to go from phase A to B and I have 480 volts. So we're gonna test our starter to see if it'll start. We'll put it in hand mode, we'll hit the start button, and nothing is happening. We know we have 480 volts at the top of our starter, but for some reason, our starter will not start. So the first thing we wanna do is find out, do we have any control voltage? So we know 480 volts is leaving phase A and phase B at the top of our starter, and it should be feeding our transformer. We have 480 volts feeding the top side of our transformer. We have power. Let's test the secondary side of our fuses. We have power. So we have power to our transformer. And now do we have any control voltage coming from our transformer? So we're going to test from our neutral to the hot after our fuse. And yes, we have control voltage. All right, so something is wrong in our control circuit for us not to get power. So we're going to come over to our push button. So we're gonna to have to come over to our push button and do we have power to our start button? So we're gonna test our, on, we, our, hand, our hand switch is on. We're gonna test power to our hand switch. And yes, we have power feeding our hand switch. 
power should be going through our hand switch on this side of the switch, and it is, which is also feeding our push button, start button, and it is, which that also feeds our holding contact. And finally, when we push start, we should get power here. We push the start button, so I'll hold the start button with one finger, and I'll test with the other, and yes, we have power leaving our start button and going to our coil, but our coil is not engaging. That tells me that we probably are missing a neutral. So let's see. So we're gonna go to our holding contact, which we know is hot because we've tested it on our handoff auto and start button. And we're gonna go to the normally closed. This is actually before the normally closed switch, terminal 96, which is the neutral coming from our transformer. And we have 120 volts and now we're gonna to go to terminal 95. Okay, now we do not have, have a neutral on terminal 95. We have power if we go to ground, but if we go to terminal 95, we have nothing. So that means our overload is tripped. 96 and 97, or sorry, 96 and 95, which should be normally closed, is actually open. So we have to reset our overload. So we're gonna push the reset button. And now I'll continue to test. I have power on 96 and the hold contact. And now I have power between 95 and the holding contact. Our motor should start. Let's press the start button. And there you go, we, our motor is running. Uh, so we lost our neutral. The next thing we should do is we should try to figure out why the motor tripped. There's a reason why an overload would trip. So we should take our meter and put it to ampacity and we'll test the three leads going to the motor. So we're gonna take our meter, we're gonna go from voltage, we're going to go to ampacity and we're going to test the amperage coming from our starter to find out why our overload tripped. So here we have 0.6 amps. On phase B, we have 0.7 amps. On phase A, we have also 0.7 amps. Now this motor is rated at 1.1 amps. It's currently running with absolutely no load. So uh, the motor is, uh, is running well within its limits. So this trip for some reason, maybe, maybe the motor was bound up, maybe that's why it tripped, but resetting it, making sure we have control voltage, testing our amperage, uh, the motor should be, should be in good shape. One last check we can make with the power turned off, and we're going to turn our meter to the ohms setting, continuity, check uh, ohm setting, test the probes together to make sure our meter is operating. And now we're going to test from ground to each lead of the motor. Be sure that all your power is off. We'll test ground to phase A, and we have no continuity there. Ground to phase B, no continuity there. Ground to phase C, no continuity there. That's a good sign. Uh, really, if we really wanna check out this motor, uh, to know if there's a problem with the motor, we should use a megameter or a megger and uh, test the resistance of the windings in the motor to ground to make sure that this motor isn't failing. But everything tests out with this motor, so uh, we're, this motor is good to go. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. And there you have it. Motor's running great. So there you have it. Uh, troubleshooting a three-phase control panel, a three-phase motor control, a three-phase motor starter, and a three-phase motor. Uh, remember, always test all your phases, phase A and B, phase B and C, phase A and C. Then test to ground, phase A to ground, phase B to ground, phase C to ground. It's very, very important because if you don't, if you just test to ground, and you don't go phase to phase, the motor has windings, and you, you may have lost a neutral, or you may have lost a fuse, I should say, 
And if you go face to ground, you're gonna get voltage on every single phase because phase A could go through the, mo through the motor and back to phase B and you're going to get a reading. But if you go phase to phase, you're gonna know if you've lost a fuse or not. So it's very, very important. Let me take this off. All right. Anyway, so hope you enjoyed watching. Be safe out there and take care. See you in the next video.